Hello, hi, hi everybody. Kelvin from London here. Stereo Review X is my channel. I review uh, vintage stereo and more modern stereo equipment sometimes, of which that is uh, the case. That's like a 1996 Arcan amp. So what I'm gonna do today is, I'm gonna kind of review both of these essentially, but I'm gonna compare and contrast them. Uh, mostly because you know it's kind of interesting. This is 1975 Japanese Sansui. Uh, this is 1995, roughly yeah, 1995-96 Arcam, British company. I mean, I should say, you know, I'm a big fan of Sansui, which I basically have a big collection of, really, and so this is a you know I consider to be a real good sounding thing. And this Arcam is a British company. It's a well-respected company. Both of these are pretty good things. That's the truth. It's not like one of them is is no good, you know. Uh, you know, one of the things I never, you know, I don't seem to have is any, you know, bad-sounding amps because I don't want to buy those. So uh, maybe I should one day get in something that really doesn't sound good, and really sort of explain that difference. But anyway, right now, let's go through these two features and watts and stuff like that. So we've got here Sansui 881, yeah? So there's a whole range of those from 881 down to 221. And I've got all the lot from 331 to 881. And I've got the 8 Deluxe too. Um, what would I say? They, this range is, I would say, it's a kind of uh, Slightly under the radar, you might call slightly though, the more, you know, people, as time goes on, everyone finds out what things sound good. But this whole range, I really do, I really like this whole range. Uh, they, you know, they have a general similar sound, but of course, you know, certain ones sound, if you look inside, obviously the circuitry is all totally different. And, you know, they do have differences in, in what they sound like. Truly, if you were to ask me the best of this whole range, I would say it's the 331, which is a very weak amplifier. You know, you know it's like 12 watts, something like this. But it's just, just got the edge, I would say, in accuracy and dynamics. It's, it's probably one of my favorite amps of all time, the 331. But anyway, this is the 881, uh, so more or less the top of the range there, 60 watts a channel, three sets of speakers. It's, you know, it's pretty much a humdinger from the heyday, more or less, you would say, you know, of uh, a vintage stereo. Um, nothing too extraordinary here. I mean, we've got a mid-range, we've got a mid-range button, which is nice. We've got a mono button, which I, I really like to have, always like to have a mono button. Low filter, high filter, speakers, tape monitor, mic, you can input a mic. Uh, two aux, you know, two auxiliaries, so you can put your uh, CD player or whatever into aux one or aux two. So, you know, pretty standard features, but plenty of it and no, you know, no problems there, you know. Uh, three sets of speakers, 60 watts. Okay, this one, Arcam Alpha. 90, I think the actual figure is 1994 to 1996. I think that's right. Uh, 50 watts a channel. Arcam, the cam it refers to Cambridge. So this is lit, sort of linked to that, to the original Cambridge manufacturer, which then actually Cambridge, which you know of today, is really richer sounds. It's there, they bought that company. I think they maybe they still have someone that ran it, but you know, it turned into a different company quite, quite definitely. So um, the Cambridge you see today probably doesn't have much to do with this Arcam or the original Cambridge amplifiers, the low, long, slim black ones from the like mid 70s. Uh, anyway, okay, what we've got here, usual stuff, bass, treble, balance. You've got a, a direct button here, yeah? So you can cut out the tone controls. Bass, treble, balance, they'll just be eliminated and won't work. You know, that's good. 
you're cutting out signal path, which means you're getting a purer signal path. You know, the more things you put in the way of the signal, it just degrades slightly. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go through a bunch of songs and talk about how these performed in those songs. By the end of that, you should uh, have a good idea of what this amp, what these amps sound like. Okay, um, let's start off with, I did a song called The E Street Shuffle, Bruce Springsteen. It's on his second album, The Wild Unis and The E Street Shuffle. It's a very busy record, that. It's got a ton of stuff going on, horns, congas, very, very busy. And it's quite a nice track to test your stereo with, yeah? And, you know, if you haven't got a good stereo, you, you kind of know it, because that song won't sound good. And if you have got a good stereo, you'll be listening to all this detailed stuff going on. And you'll be thinking, oh, this is good, you know. And it's not an incredible production but you know that's kind of part of the test but you know it's all there it's all there so okay let's get down to business with this sound I'll do the Sansui first yeah okay it's Springsteen load of bass getting a lot of bass off Sansui it's powerful Sansui are famous for their bass to be honest bass upper mid bass kind of detailing there so you get a real good nice you know, it really gives you the rhythm. You really can tune into the bass side of it here with that. So on the E Street Shuffle, oh yeah, punchy bass, bass, a bass drum, great horns. There's a uh, there's an organ that goes off on the left hand channel. It's really funky, really great. I mean, see if you can hear that on your organ at the beginning on your on your stereo, and it'll sort of reveal how, how good your one is um, really funky really good really good uh, just great yeah I wasn't used to hearing that organ on the left hand side okay and it's a big sound it goes low this and it's got real weight yeah it's just got depth it kind of hits the floor you know it's got that weight that kind of grounds a sound you know which is nice okay talking about the Arkham here on the E Street Shuffle. Not so much bass, yeah? Now that doesn't mean that this thing is bass light, yeah? It just means there's a ton of gorgeous bass on there. It's probably a bit bigger than most, you know what I mean? So on here, not so much bass. It's cleaner, kind of more analytical. I mean, I'm using the word dry, you know what I mean? Kind of analytical, not quite spiky, but kind of sharper and detailed. I mean, you would say that this has got ultimately better detail retrieval. That is what you would say. I mean, you know, this is a more modern amp. That is what you would have, you know, expect to happen over time, that things got better. And you know, this is a quality, you know, it's a class amp, park amp. Um, it's not making such a dynamic sound. So you're getting a lot of accuracy, a lot of detail, a lot more kind of, a uh, little bit more sharpness in the sort of, I don't know what you call it, the lower treble. A little bit more analytical sharpness there. But what you don't get off this arc amp is the real explosiveness, yeah? So when the when you get that psh, bass drum and cymbal, it, it's not so big, yeah? And that, again, that's not because probably this is terrible at it, but it's the, the sense who's really good at it, yeah? Uh, okay, yeah, not making it so dynamic a sound. Slight emphasis on the upper mid treble. It's impressive. It just wasn't so enjoyable. It wasn't quite so much in the room, you know? Now, there's a thing I kind of want to talk about here, which comes up really well with these two. I mean, I'm called, I'm going to use, just use this word presentation, right? This Sansui, it will put that bass, sort of fill that room, fill the room with quite sort of 
fat but detailed bass. And then you'll have the mid, you know, the, the snare drum and the mid range and the space behind it. There's a thing about these amps that doesn't make sense if you just talk about frequency responses, but there's a way that this presents the bass sort of spit forward and then it sort of makes space in the middle. I don't know, <laughs> that's what makes it enjoyable. You know, that's kind of a, I mean, I'm just gonna use that word presentation. It's how it places everything. It's not quite the same as the sound stage, but it just puts it in a kind of, and it separates it a bit, yeah? So that Sansui had, has the edge. On that song, though, let's, uh, let's carry on. Um, did uh, Love and Affection, Joan Armour Trading, which has some big dynamic hits on it. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm just missing the explosive cymbal and bass drum things. I mean, they're there, you know, they're there, but they're just not going that, you know, just not really impacting me. Uh, and yeah, okay, on this Arcam, good separation, you know, good detail, you know, it's all there. It's probably, there's more detail on that than there is on this. It's just the, the, the quality, the presentation that is different. And this one is just a little bit drier, harder, if you like. Uh, yeah, it's just a little bit sort of drier and sharper in the mid-range, you know. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I want a bit more bass from that. It's just not giving me the big bass notes as nice as this one is. Uh, but things change, you know, actually. When we get into some different songs, you'll see. So, I did now a song called As, which is uh, Stevie Wonder, Songs of the Key of Life. So, Interestingly, that record, it doesn't have a lot of explosive dynamics, yeah? It doesn't have a lot of psh, 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 psh kind of stuff, yeah? So, on that track, really, I was surprised this Arkham was basically, it was, it was kind of better. It was kind of more enjoyable. The vocal, Stevie Wonder's voice was nicely separated in the middle, a bit more sort of, see the sound stage is a bit more well defined in this, but the general thing of where the bass is and the mid and the explosiveness is kind of nicer on here. I hope this is making sense. Uh, yeah, tiny bit on as, tiny bit of unhappiness about the, the, the lower treble. There's a tiny bit of um, harshness. Harshness is probably too strong a word. Just a bit hard and dry. Just a bit, you know. I'm very, really, very particular here. Uh, you know, I'm not saying this is bad. You know, it's just that I'm comparing two good things, quite frankly. Uh, but on as, I was surprised. This was nicer than I was expecting. Uh, what else I did? I did Alison Krauss, Now That I Found You. Okay, Sansui. Great bass, great bass. I put it here, nice, deep, stringy bass. I'm hearing the dum dum dum. you know. I'm really hearing that nice. I'm following that bass really good. Uh, nice sound stage, nice presentation. That's on the Sansui. Uh, on this Arcam, I got here bass just a little bit thinner, just a little bit thinner, uh, and slightly analytical, as I've said before. But I would say more detail, yeah, more detail with this Arcam. Okay, what I'm gonna then what I did was I went. To, I thought you know this is playing CDs, by the way. Uh, so then I thought, well, I'll, you know, I must try the phono stage. Both of these have phono stages, yeah? Uh, so I played two songs. I shot The Sheriff, Eric Clapton, and I think it's The Wedding List, Kate Bush. I better check that title, actually. 
slightly different picture, yeah? Picture changed a bit there. You know, phono circuits, the turntable circuit is a separate bit of circuitry and some amps have great phono circuits and some amps don't have such good phono circuits. So it's a different animal, you know, it can, you can have a, anyway, that's what happened here, basically. This Arcan had a really nice, much bigger mid-range. The mid-range was gorgeous on vinyl. Really nice. I was surprised. The snare drum sound on that I Shot the Sheriff was just absolutely alive and in the room. Absolutely. I could almost see the stick moving and the whole drum was just great. Really nice. Perfectly accurate snare drum. The mid-range on this Arkham on the vinyl, it's almost, I wouldn't say too big, but it was just very nice. You know, and if you have a really nice mid-range, it's, it's so entertaining. If it's sweet and accurate, it's very entertaining. Uh, so going on this Sansui, on the phono stage, uh, bass is much bigger, as usual. I put here bigger and funkier. Now, I shot the sheriff's got some great funky bass stuff on it. But uh, actually, the mid range was not as good as this, which kind of surprised me. But the mid range was not as clear and sharp, and it kind of wasn't so enjoyable, you know. So, there's a little bit of reversal of fortunes there when we went to the phono stages, you know. I would say. This has got a, probably a superior face, giving you the nice mid-range. You're still going to get more bass out of here and the real weight. You'll get real weight out of this one. But, um, you know, this kind of uh, got better on the phono stage. It kind of surprised me. Okay, let me try and uh, sum this up in some fashion. I didn't mention price. I should have mentioned prices. On eBay, if you wanted to buy this, I, re I bought this recently. It was £110. I think I got a good price, yeah? You could pay like £140. It was like $175 US dollars. Uh, so I think it was a good price, but they go for around that, maybe 130 something like that. 50 watts, British amp, nice phono stage, 100, 120 quid. It's good. That's a good deal, man. You know, that is a good deal, you know. You know, there's a lot of stuff in the 90s that wasn't so good. This was nice. This is, you know, even though, well, let's do it here, the Sansui. You know, this is 1975, yeah? I mean, this is vintage. This is what people want. Visually, it looks great. And it also sounds great. But you will probably end up paying about £250 for this, maybe £300, so, sorry, $300, something like that. Um, I mean, worth thinking about, this Arkham will probably outlive this Sansui. I mean, I've got a load of these Sansuis, and I've had them for years now, maybe, you know, probably five or six years, like eight of them. None of them have gone wrong. They seem to be quite well you know, whatever they've done when they've made these things, they seem to have good longevity in them. But, you know, at some point, you know, in the next 10 or 20 years, something's going to happen here, I'm sure. So, in a way, what I'm saying is you probably get more life out of this one. Um, well, OK, let me let me just do it generally. So, and price wise, yeah, sorry, you got about £250. So, this Sansui, it's got a bigger base, it's got weight, it's got bigger dynamics. The phono stage isn't quite so good. Uh, you know, it's got a nice, spacious mid-range and treble. It's big. It's luxurious. It's a sort of, uh, you can just soak up this sound, yeah? I mean, you know, it may be me, but I've listened to a ton of amps, you know. And I, I keep, whenever I come back to Sansui, most times I was, I'm going, oh God, that is so, it's so nice, yeah? It's dynamic, you can just lie down and really soak up that sound. The bass is detailed, and, uh, you know, 
But I mean, I, you know, maybe I'm just a mad fan of Sansui, but in my experience, you know, these amps just sound good. Uh, yeah, I put here, it's more enjoyable. You know, if I was given the choice between this and this for free, say, I'm having this. And if there was no such thing as money in this world, you know, it's nothing to do with the cost it could be or should be. It's just giving me more pleasure. It's just giving me more, it's making me smile more. I'm getting the rhythms a little bit more because I'm getting nice detailed bass, which seems to be a thing that kind of got lost after like 1980. That really sort of, um, and a sort of the dynamic headroom, as they call it. Uh, and it, yeah, the structure of the sound. This one, it's Arcam, you know, you get it for 110 quid. It is a bargain. It's probably better than most. Oh, I can't think of many other, I can't think of hardly anything you would get for that price that's that good, that I know of, you know. I don't know everything, but uh, that I know of. Uh, it's a kind of British sound, you know, it's British made. It's a little bit analytical. It's just a little bit analytical for me compared to that. Uh, it's got a ton of detail, this Arcam, you know. If you have like really great speakers that are gonna show everything and also be nice, not be, you know, not be harsh, this Arcam might be the thing, you know. If this Sansui was on a, a huge pair of super detailed speakers, you know, the distortion figures, basically, are lower on this Arcam than they are in this Sansui. But that doesn't reveal itself until you get into loud volumes and super high-end speakers. Does not reveal itself, you know. Doesn't bother me. But, you know, just so as you know. Um, yeah, but yeah, this is a class act. And if you listen to vinyl only, if you really just listen to vinyl, that will be a real bargain. I would call that a real bargain if, you, if you're just going to listen to vinyl. If you're going to listen to CD, I'd definitely have that. If I was given the chance, I'd have that. So, okay, that's, that's about it. I'm going to just mention a couple, well, one thing really for anyone that watches this channel uh, regularly. Like, I'll just move these out of the way. I reviewed this uh, valve amp uh, a couple of weeks ago heart rhythm it's a class a single ended triode whatever it is it's the pretty much the sort of top banana of valve amps configurations with these 300b valves yeah i i, I don't really know how much this would cost if you wanted to buy a second hand. probably about 500 quid 500 pounds i'd say but what i just wanted to say was i've been messing around with loads of amps as i usually do and every time I go back to this valve amp, it's just, this valve amp is the joy, yeah? This valve amp is like, oh God, you know, the simplicity and the purity of that system, you know, the simplicity of valves and, and anyone else I play this amp to, this valve amp to, they, they, they're just going, oh, that's good. <laughs> Complete strangers, some people that don't care less about hi-fi, you know, and me, you play this valve amp, they go, oh, yeah, give me, I want to hear more music now. So I just thought I'd let you know that this valve amp is a great thing. And I have been actually putting it through the preamp of my Sansui 331, uh, sorry, 317. This is a late 70s integrated where you can separate the pre and power. And I found that actually better than the Rotel dedicated preamp. Uh, but you know, I don't think I don't have a really great preamp, which actually, actually, I want to get a good preamp, a transistor one, I'd say. So if anyone's got any advice for me, because uh, I don't really know, you know, they all seem to be so expensive, and uh, you know, I've got also a a phono stage over there, which is from some guy in America that makes them by hand, which was five hundred pounds, right, and. It's quite good, but you know when you get into these kind of phono stage preamps, to me, you're paying a lot of money and not getting big differences. Maybe just changes. You know what I mean? 
So um, even though I was quite impressed with that, but for 500 pounds, oh, you know, it's still a preamp, you know, it's a phono stage amp. But anyway, if anyone has any good advice for me, you know, new or old on preamps, please let me know because, uh, you know, that's the whole idea of this channel. Share your information and we'll get better sound. That's just the idea and uh, please subscribe. Apparently it's really good. Okay, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Bye now.